Good morning. I fell asleep more than three hours ago. The wind chill, you can see there's, that's what actually woke me up was a couple of guys talking real loud. There's, they had some diversion on the, near the creek bridge over there. You can see a flashing blinking light. They had a, but the wind is calming down 51 degrees. And now that I'm in the fart sack, yeah, that's me. Uh, I'm really getting weary of the, of the wind chill. It's not really cold. I'm just, what the hell are they doing over there? They may be dismantling the, there was something there all evening where, or there's just some lunatic out there. I think you'd see him. It's, it's some, I think he's actually on that little side. Road. But anyway, yeah. Uh, I didn't feel like it earlier, but to tell you the truth, Now that there's like no stress, because really, honestly, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, what the hell are they doing over there? Anyway, well, that's uh, that's really what. Really, what it took for it to wake me up was somebody, you know, a thousand feet away, just talking loud. I feel rested. I'm, if I didn't, that would be a sign of depression. I'm not really depressed. I'm seriously thinking about having some of that uh, Scottish cough medicine uh, made from uh, malted barley. The Taco Bell and the Jack in the Crack is open late night for those people who, uh, meth heads and weirdos that wander up here from Austin. And, oh God, that's some terrible food. It's, it really is. It's, I suppose it's kind of well disguised, but all that palm oil at the Jack and the Crack when they do their, I used to love their, uh, their chicken burgers are made from a, a breaded. Anyway, let me finish telling the story. Those guys, yeah, I think they're, they're talking like a work crew. They're, they have some kind of, warning device up there earlier and there and um but you know yesterday i didn't really eat much i was kind of busy went up to well, i uh, probably didn't get in but about a thousand calories that's including the cookies during the night i really didn't even dip them in the but yesterday it was my, I've made stories before about, made videos before about social anxiety, how people kind of put me on the spot and, and it just, I usually just tell them I'm fine, no thanks. And, and uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, take a, have a, a wee dram. Yeah. Cause the time's perfect for it. It's very little wind. I'm feeling kind of rested. That's who wants to like say smoke pot at the end of the day. 
I mean, I've always preferred it early in the morning. This ain't pot, but it will sure help to kind of clear my lungs and sinuses. Have you ever noticed that cough and cold medications, you know, the drug NyQuil was an overnight success, success because it was, as I remember, uh, something like about, you know, uh, 90 proof alcohol and some Benadryl. Simple drug combination like that works, but I'll get back to the point because I'm going to make this six minutes or less is that a nice lady and her smoking hot daughter, I assume she was probably was of age to be talking to some old hobo like me. Uh oh, I said hobo, didn't I? <laughs> they stopped and asked if they could make me a plate of, you know, food. And, you know, they, she was obviously, this was much earlier. They were obviously planning on uh, having dinner and uh, bringing me a plate from there. And I had to go to great lengths explaining to them that I do not allow anybody else to choose my foods for me. I cannot. It will make me sick as shit. And... Uh, you know, it actually made my stomach tighten up, the anxiety from the, matter of fact, I was getting that feeling like I was going to have like a stress-related kind of disturbance in my gut. It's, it's just like the second day in a row I've had that kind of feeling from contact with the public. It's from, they keep, they won't give me the thing I need the most, which is money to buy the appropriate items they keep wanting to give me their food. It's got to be their food from their hand, like a dog. You know, yeah, go ahead, like, lick my fingers and shit. No, fuck y'all. I want that shit out of a sealed can. And there's somebody down there walking across. That's unusual. Maybe he's with the work crew or something. People don't go walking up that way because there's more than about six tenths of more than that where there's really no sidewalk you know and this town is still under development and they're kind of they deliberately we're not putting in a sidewalk there because they don't really want <coughs> pedestrians heading up towards the mall from this area if they you go out there they want you to it's understandable it's their town it's their you know it's I grew up part of my life in Bryan, Texas, where people don't put in the, you know, deliberately to kind of reduce traffic in the neighborhood. People don't put in the the sidewalks as they're supposed to on what is still a public easement. And then they get angry at you for walking across their yard. And the law says you don't really have to, you don't have to walk in the street. You can walk in the front part of their yard. So I remember a lot of the hostile activity in Bryan, Texas. And shit, you ain't kind of me. It was, in some forms, it was racist. And in some forms, it was just straight out fucking snobbery. And shit. So, in just three hours, that's all it took. As soon as I got the wind chill off of me, got in the fart sack, boom, I was out. I was watching this real weird movie starring Michael Caine that was, when you think about it, it's kind of a precursor to Pulp Fiction. It's the name of the movie was Pulp. And it's really, it's narrated in that kind of that pulpy kind of style and starring Mickey Rooney and Michael Caine and some hot looking chick. And I should mention here, I met Mickey Rooney in the summer of 98 when he was doing a... Uh, <clears throat> The Wizard of Oz with Eartha Kitt at the Orpheum Theater in San Francisco, right there on the edge of the UN Plaza and stuff. And I came walking up from behind. And I went, hey, Mickey, because you really can't miss him. You know, he's, and there the person goes walking back again. Just to kind of show you, I do have my glasses on him. Yeah, he's got some kind of flash. He's probably going back and forth getting coffee or something at the 7-Eleven. Uh, if I have any kind of coffee this morning, it's probably going to be Irish coffee. I'm actually, I'm 
have fairly limited pain, but I would like to have a little alcohol on my vocal cords and I know it doesn't go down your lungs. Okay. But anyway, this is my favorite time of day is once everybody fucking quietens down and the wind's only a tiny fraction of what it was all afternoon all stuff it was that stuff just sucks the life out of me my first winter in Austin which we're about to just begin winter like last time this is beginning to look like the my first winter in Austin where it really wasn't too bad of weather and as soon as winter hit the winds howled the rain came and the ice came and the snow came and we had at least one morning where it was about 18 degrees for most of the night and most of the day and heavy coating of ice and snow and sleet and the town shut down for the day it's actually i remember chinky i'm going to use the terms i use it because he was actually like nepalese and a real cool dude and when he saw me bust out of my uh my little uh snow hut there and stuff and come because i waited because i could hear all them miserable homeless fuckers who always they're always bragging that i got a tent and all this stuff and yeah you know, we got a stove and those fuckers were up there at 7-eleven by seven eight o'clock in the morning as soon as it got light they were out there shivering and shaking and all i'm doing it behind the camera all blue and crap and just miserable and stuff and then i come busting out i actually i had a little it's kind of slightly insulated mylar like bivouac sack kind of thing and i actually had to cut a little hole in it so i could breathe because it was water impermeable and uh and stuff and i managed to come just i literally had to cut my way out of it and stuff but it did its purpose for that night and uh and when i come up and hit the door oh chinky showed up is around nine o'clock or so and he was in there busting ass and it was kind of cool thing it's when i showed up because chinky was a big fan of mine because I defended him and another guy against, you know, armed attack. You know, let's just say I stabbed a few fuckers in that store. And Chinky was, he'd go, you my hero. You my hero. He's so funny. He's a handsome young man. He was, you my hero. And when I come lumbering in, you know, looking for, you know, hot coffee or something, that's, he goes, I open up just for you. I come just for you. And which kind of touched my heart a bit that he is, he braved the <laughs> roads, but you know, he grew up driving in snow or being, so. And he actually went and grabbed a couple of milk uh, cartons and stuff, cause he knew I had mobility problems and, and uh, set him down. You sit down right here. I get you something, you know, and all this, and then, some guy made it in and he went over straight to the ATM machine and pulled out a bunch of twenties and just started handing them out to the folks inside the store to make, there are good hearted people around here, even in Austin. But I'm trying to tell you one of the, that was a brutal winter when the winds were steady 20 to we had one full day of 50 mile an hour winds from start to finish. And you try living your life at 50 mile an hour winds. So that's it for now. The uh, anybody watching who's a regular Pflugerville watcher and stuff, stop trying to get me to eat your food. It's not going to happen. Yesterday I got in less than a thousand calories because I had a lot of shit to do. And the wind between that, I really did not get in 
and that made me more susceptible to the wind chill. But stop trying to give me or bring me food where I really don't believe you when you tell me you're using just butter or shit like this or Monteca. I'm fine with Mexican food that's kind of is cooked in the real style of with hog lard and stuff. No, y'all are using vegetable oil because it's more convenient. That's what everybody, you know, says use vegetable oil. They think that manteca is bad for you. And shit, there's actually one of the first people coming out the side that may actually be, let me look. Nope. Just somebody out tooling around. You know what? I'm nice and warm and comfortable. I think I'm going to crack open that bottle of Johnny Walker. Just as for medicinal purposes. I have no intention of getting drunk. You know, it's maybe just some, you know, ease my throat. And soothe a little bit of... I have a little pain in my feet, but not much. Uh, and maybe it'll also make me because I do need to get in one more little sleep session before this place fills up with fucking hypochondriacs that's where that bastard was at yesterday morning going uh is that a is that a sleeping bag uh no sir it's a technical the technical term is fart sack that's exactly what went on here yesterday morning that's almost 17 minutes that's way too long but Good morning to all my uh, English and Scottish viewers, and and good evening. It's well, today's Thursday, so it's already Friday in Australia. So, and hello to all my friends here in Texas that are not too far away. May we get together soon and smoke some reefer or something like that. Actually, I got a call today. I actually answered. He was. He goes. You got some sticky icky man. I. Can, no, dude, you got the wrong number. Somebody had given him this number, my number, as a contact for Sticky Icky in the Bryan College Station area. So I have deleted and blocked that number because we had a nice chat, though. I can tell he's a young black man. He was cool, easy going. He, it really, cannabis is not really considered much of a crime anymore in, in Texas. It hasn't been for a long time even though he's over there in an area where you will still get arrested for possession of small amounts of that shit. Of course, Texas, for those of you who don't know it, Texas was the first state to decriminalize marijuana. By 1972, possession of four ounces or less, way ahead of New York or California, where it was still a fucking felony, Possession of four ounces or less of marijuana was a $250 fine, $49 court costs. Bye-bye. Texas was the first to decriminalize pot, not the last. And he was reminding me that the, I can get in the med. I know I can get in the medical program. I just don't care. Uh, don't really. <clears throat> anyway. It's Johnny Walker time. It'd be nice if I had a nice cup of, uh, actually, I don't know anything that goes well with it. I'm, and it's going to be icy cold. Not sure if I'm even going to have it, but that's 19 minutes. That's long enough of seeing the intersection of the East Parkway and Dessau Road the uh, way I like it only me here and a few passers by and some freaking work crew over there wish you guys would keep it down man brother's trying to sleep here you know 